Yes, people, we've got the £165 BKFC world champion, Elvin Brito, in the house. What's happening, bro? What's going on, bro? It's just working, man. Been busy, busy, man. Uh, it's just yeah. been non-stop. You know, I haven't really gotten much rest just, since before or after the fight. I've just been busy, so it's, it's, I, I can't complain. It's what I wanted, but, you know. I'm just uh, wondering if you could share with the UK fans, mate, just what what's your background? Like, when did you first start getting into fighting in your uh, career well, in combat sports? Man, I started... I started the fight camp when I was like, like I was 16. I was a little fat kid, 16. I was just looking for something to do, um, and I, I went to walked into like a local community boxing gym and started boxing with a, a, the coach there. His name was Steve Real in Lockport, Illinois, and um, and I really loved it. I wasn't that good at it, but I had a really big right hand and and I was tough and I and I kept coming back. So. Um, it, it was fun. I, uh, my my coach saw the talent in me. He saw he saw my fighting ability and he saw the potential that I had. And I lost my first three fights in a row, even though my coach kept calling, telling me, "Hey, you got to keep going back." And um, I came back. I won my set, next seven fights in a row. Ended up with a record of about like twenty seven and nine, something like that, as an amateur. I, I, I also trained amateur in Puerto Rico. Um, with um, my coaches over here, um, Jaime Stewart and my current coach is Cesar, Cesar Gonzalez, who, who still trains me till today. We, uh, me and him, we, we've had a, like a, a back and forth, like a back and forth relationship. We had, you know, we, 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 we get together, we do great training and then we have fallen out and we don't talk to each other for years. And then we, we did it again. When I turned pro in MMA, I, 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 I once I left Puerto Rico, I, I started delving into MMA, mixed martial arts. And I kind of fell in love with mixed martial arts. I, I loved boxing, but it's just the way my career was. I always felt like I was getting cheated in a lot of decisions. This is how bare knuckle is. Yeah. A lot of, but that's how boxing is. It's a lot of political stuff, especially yeah, yeah. easy to lose. But I found my home in mixed martial arts. I'm sure mixed martial arts. They couldn't really take the fights away from me. Finishing fights, easier to finish fights. And um, I just enjoyed it. And um, I did that for a really long time. I went pro. I moved back to Puerto Rico. Made up with Caesar. We had an awesome run here. I was six and zero. Uh, my wife got pregnant, and I broke my arm in my in, in my in my sixth professional fight. It took about a year to recover from it. But a lot of people, th- you know, the doctor was like, "Hey, you're never gonna be able to fight again." <laughs> and uh, I laughed at him. I was like, "Bro, I'm I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna come see you after I win my next fight." And sure enough, I seen him like two years later. He's like, "Hey, what are you doing, buddy?" <laughs> <laughs> he's like did you, you still fighting like yeah sure still winning <laughs> <laughs> so when did the transition no, uh, i had once i moved to the u.s it's just like how it's just your path in life and um, how everything works it was just like i'm, I'm meant I, I was like on a trajectory to be a, a, a bare knuckle champion without even knowing it because i was always a boxer in mixed martial arts i always had my own unorthodox style and I was always really good at it and that was really what I was known for. Um I started training in Pensacola with Roy Jones Senior as part of one of my as my, my boxing coach as um also I was training with Capital in different mixed martial arts gyms but I was training with them and they used to always tell me I'm like they were like Elvin you're in the wrong sport man like you need to box like you you could be a champion and um when the opportunity arose for me to do a bare knuckle fight I was um I mean, I was still getting paid pretty decent mixed martial arts. I was well known and respected, but my record had kind of been, you know, my record had been going down. I've been losing a lot of split decisions and stuff like that. And um, the opportunity came about to do something different. And I, I went for it and I loved it. At first, I really didn't know if I wanted to, if I was going to be like one and done and not come back to it because it's really scary and different. It was BKFC 3. So so different. Everybody's freaked out. They don't know what to expect. You know, it's like back to the amateur again, days again. It was back to, it was that thrill of the old days where you're in the unknown territory, and there was so much left to learn and to do. And really, that's what made me fall in love with mixed martial arts. Because even, I mean, with mixed martial arts and with bare knuckle, and specifically because it's so new, it's unknown territory. That's how mixed martial arts was for a long time. And it's kind of developed into a, a different sport than when it started. And I'm sure Bare Knuckle is going to go through the same cycle. And uh, yeah. he came in at BKFC 3, and, and, and he saw, saw the opportunity to be a part of that. 
So we went for it. At first, when I started doing big, uh, fair enough, well, I, I, um, my drive was a little bit different. I, I love fighting. It was something new. I had absolute faith in my striking abilities. And I was like, oh, man, this is an easy opportunity for me to make some quick bucks. I could be the call people up, get paid for it. And, you know, um, you know, if I, if I, if, you know, I'll do it. I'll, if I, if something happens, I won't get hurt. I'll still get paid. You know, it wasn't really about winning or losing. It's just going over there. It's just pretty much trying to get paid. And that's yeah. one thing I tell a lot of guys coming into the sport now when they tell me, Hey, Elvin, you got any advice for me? I'm like, bro, you got to find a better reason than money. Yeah. To get in there and toe the line. And, and you got, you're not going to be able to put it all on the line. Um, for money, you're not going to be able to like dedicate yourself just completely and, and, and just, you know, it's going to be a lot easier to just uh, quit when the time comes or, or not push yourself to the limit. Not You're not going to have the hunger of a guy who's got a real reason to fight. Was um, it totally brand new for you then? Um, what's up? Was it, was it totally like brand new for you when you went to the bare knuckle or did you get into quite a few fights growing up? I, I'm sorry, go ahead and repeat yourself. I was having a problem hearing you. Was it, in, it was it like your bare knuckle debut was it totally fresh to you, or did you grow up like fighting on the streets and things like no, that? No, I, I was always a nice guy, man. It was this guy gave me the ability to. I've always been able to just good at breaking stuff and you know punching people in the face, <laughs> and not getting hit. You know, I've always I, it was just an ability that was given to me. I like I'm I'm cold when I fight. I don't. A lot of people have to get themselves hyped up. Or they have to get in the zone. A lot of people well, that have been back there with me, they they know I'm just. I'm back there. I warm up. I go in there and do my job. That's why I look happy to be there. I'm happy to be there because I've been training so hard that I finally don't have to train. All I gotta do is do five rounds and, and you know show off and I do my work and, and and show people why we're we're the best bare knuckle fighters. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's 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 different, you know. It, it, and and now that now that we're uh, champions and we got all these different possibilities. It's always main cards, always big exciting fights. Everybody's calling you out, and and uh, I just feel like through the cycle of my career that I've been through, it's been a really long career. Uh, it's been 20 years since I started my amateur career. Like I'm ready for this, so like now I'm just excited to be here. You know, I can't wait for my next fight. I'm still hungry. Like I train hard every day. I got guys coming out here and doing training camps with me. Lorenzo hunts right now. Yeah, I deal with me you know, doing his training camp, and, and we're going hard. You know, we're going hard. Um, What's he like to train with, Lorenzo Hunt? What's up? What's he like to train with, Lorenzo? Oh, uh, yo, Hunt? Lorenzo Hunt is—he's a really awesome guy, man. He—he's—he's he's, when we come when it comes to high high level, uh, bare knuckle, like there's no non—you can't have any nonsense, you know. You can't be sugarcoating anything, and you can't you can't be you really can't coddle to people too much, you know, like really at all. You can get maybe when they're first started, but once they once they you know, once once it's time to go, it's time to go, and then that's one thing that we have in common. So we 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 have a really good work ethic, and we're just a really good team. We both bring you know, we both have a lot of heart. We have a reason to fight, not just for the money, but like there's there's a trajectory that we're trying to get through. And uh, I mean, he's so strong. He's a little bit he's bigger than me. You know, I'm a little faster than him, and even though he's he's one of the fastest uh, cruiserweights I've ever uh, seen. You know, he's real dynamic and he's a lot smarter than people expect him to be you know they think that just because the way that he fights they 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 think they they know the kind of character that he has but he's he's a genius he loves he loves bare, he loves bare knuckle and he loves fighting and he's always trying to look for new ways to be better and trying to always find the edge just like me so like i said we're a perfect team we've, we've only made each other better and we're always testing each other like, like i said over here in the jungle, like when we're trained, all the guys that come out here, we have a whole bunch of guys come out here. When when you start flaking, when you start getting tired, that's when everybody starts turning up. You know, that's the, <laughs> like they're gonna leave you. Like they're trying to leave you. They're trying to be the first one in the in the front. And so it's it's a really cool atmosphere. It's, it's you know we we've we've had a you know it's we've been lucky that we've had good synchronicity, good cadence, good you know it's it's been you know good what I always say good for the goose, good for the gander. We have an awesome team. You know, Awesome community yeah. keeps be, being getting bigger. Lorenzo's a part of it now, you know, and uh, you know I'm part of his community too. We're doing really big things. We got big plans for the future. We plan to keep our belt for a long time because we know we train harder than anybody else, and we we're all we we're obsessed with this. Like this is what we do, you know. Like yeah. when people fight, they finish their fight and they go back to their normal life. You know, I yeah. fight so I could, you know, and then I take a rest and go back to my normal life, which is yeah. what I do. <laughs> this, this is it, you know. So. 
it's a little bit different and uh and the mentality and it's just you know i said i, I feel like um the reason we have guys you know i'm a nice guy but guys don't come all the way to puerto rico to train with me because i'm a nice guy you know yeah. um and I'm all everybody loves me until they start sparring with me. Then they then they hate me. You know when they fight me and they then they hate me. They're like, oh man, I hate this dude. <laughs> but uh, um, um, it's been awesome having all these different guys. It was coming from all these different uh, uh, places in their life, completely different roles, fighters that have completely different reasons to fight for. And and, and really, when you're pushing yourself to a limit, it, it gives anybody a chance to kind of look back at why are they even doing this? Like, why do you really want to do this? Like, <laughs> like it's, it's just like, this is not a joke. This is real. Like this, you can get seriously hurt and it's, and it's do or die when it comes to when, when you're, when you're going for everything it's, it's do or die. So it's, it's a perfect environment for us, man. We yeah. I've seen your last, Lorenzo's your last part. And Lorenzo never beat the goat though, did he? Huh? He never beat the goat. No, that goat, man. He's undefeated, man. <laughs> he, <laughs> Michael stays undefeated. <laughs> you give him a good fighter every once in a while, yeah, man. But you know, it's all it, that's Pancho's. Uh, we've been Pancho's been kind of part of our little bare knuckle thing since since the beginning, and now he's finally blowing up. We made him on Instagram a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. he's gonna be a star, so it's really cool uh, seeing the whole thing come together, man. Well, your last outing was um, Caleb Harris. Is that right? What I'm, I'm, I don't know why I'm having so much trouble hearing you. I'm sorry. It's okay. I, I'll man. make sure I have a headphone next time. Mm -hmm. The last, your last outing was with Caleb Harris. Yes. That's it. the second fight you've had with him, isn't it? Yes, it was. And, and Caleb was a really tough dude. Yeah. He's got a lot of heart, man. And he pours his heart out in there like me, man. And, and you know, he, he's one of those guys that, you know, you, you have to be ready to, you have to be ready to put it on the line. If not, he, he, he that guy would not go down. You know, he will not go yeah. down. He's tough. He's a future champion. I see him doing a lot of big things in this sport. He's young. He's way younger than me. Yeah, um, and uh, I see him doing a lot of big things in the future. I'm sure he's gonna make another run for the belt. Um, and he's a huge 65er, so yeah, he's, he's got awesome potential. Most of a lot of the guys that I've been fighting have been, you know, I've, I've had some really good fights. My last three fights have been against some really good competition. Caleb Harris coming back better than ever. Julio Garcia, who's a two-time uh, boxing champion, uh, and then Brad Kelly was one of the toughest dudes I ever fought. I hit him so many times bare knuckle i've never had to hit somebody so many times bare knuckle <laughs> and then them not go down and uh especially when they, after the fight they tell me like bro you hit so hard i'm like i hit hard i'm like go down man go, go down. So, <laughs> it's, been, it's been awesome and uh, a lot of these fights it's kind of been, each fight kind of prepares me for the next and like like i said this is a new thing for us so it's like a journey We're, we keep learning new things about myself you watch my first fight my second fight, my third fight, my fourth fight, my sixth fight, and seventh yeah. fight, and you just see the evolution and the, you know, you, you keep picking up little things. And bare knuckle, I know in the UK it's been around for a long time, but it's all about the minutia. It's the little things, you know, the little yeah. things that go a long way. Uh, points of contact, how your hands hit, you know, how you take a blow, or how your weight is when you get hit. Um, yeah. There's just so many little things, and, and how how you can, how you should position yourself, how how you expose yourself. Because a lot of times you try to box and you just end up exposing yourself. So. Um, it, it's it's been an awesome process. I've been enjoying it. Like I can't wait to. I'm I plan on being champion for a long time, and anybody who takes it away from me, they'll deserve it. You know. Who have uh, you got I'm, your eyes on? I'm getting it. <laughs> who have you got your eyes on next to fight? Well, right now the 165 division is, is working itself out. So I I'm waiting, I'm waiting on the 165 division to work itself out. Right now, because. The white 65 division is working stuff out. I don't want to stay inactive, so I'm gonna yeah. stay active right now. The most potential fight we have, Luis Palomino, who's a 155 champion, he's been begging to fight me every day. He's got a new post asking, and he's just begging to fight me, begging to fight me. And um, even though he's not a legitimate contender for a 165 belt, even even though he was a 155 champion, yeah. I, I don't think he's a one. He's not a 165. He's not a true 65. Obviously, so he has earned his credit. He's undefeated. There's nobody worth fighting right now in his in his division, uh, ready to fight him. So this is a purpose op per perfect opportunity to get this fight out of the way. Everybody's been begging for this fight, so I'm, I'm gonna say, hey, you want you want to challenge the champion at 165? You, you know, then let's do it. This, the, uh, I think he earned it. He and this is what he wants. I think it's outrageous demands that make no sense, and he's gonna pay for it. Um, but. Um, that's the only fight to make right now. So 
the, um, I'm waiting on the contract so we can sign it. They keep begging me to sign the contract. I'm like, bro, send me the contract. Where's it at? <laughs> but, um, that, that looks like the fight that happened. It's going to be an awesome fight. There's going to be a lot of eyes on it. And, you know, we get to prove we get to prove to people, you know, the difference between not only four years ago and now, but like 155, 165. And um, you figured somebody like that would understand he's already fought a champion, a 135 champion coming up to, to the division that he doesn't belong in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and even though he's a great champion, he's a great fighter, he's not a 155er, so he, he couldn't win against the 155 champion. It's going to be the same story again, because, except a heavier, harder-hitting guy who's just going to, you know, it's going to punish him. And I, I look forward to getting this fight out of the way first and moving on to a legitimate 165 contender by the end of the year, maybe September, August, and then even maybe, maybe try to do another one, you know, because I, I, I want to stay busy. And now we're the champion, so um, it's not that I'm trying to prove a point, but when, by the time I'm done, everybody's going to know why I'm, I'm on top and I'm the best fighter and why I'm so acclaimed. And everybody, everybody says that I'm the smartest and best IQ and and American Bare Knuckle, because, you know, you guys got your own thing going on over there, too. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're seeing uh, one of old boys who was flying the flag for British boxing, Conor Tierney. You must have seen his debut. He's in your division. What do you think about him? Uh, Conor Tierney, he's great. He, look, he looked great in his fight. He's smart. He's smooth. Um, for Bare Knuckle, for the skill set that he has and uh, coming into BKFC, he's probably one of the best boxers coming in. Uh, you know, mainstay because he is a mainstay because he's been fighting for a bare knuckle for a long time. He, ha he hasn't gone anywhere. Um, he looked great. That's an awesome potential uh, opponent. I thought that I was going to be fighting him next because it made sense to me. He's like, hey, he's he's a UK champion. You know, um, he was going to fight Jim Mallers. And after that fight fell off, um, his re it was a replacement, last minute replacement. So we thought, oh, maybe we won't be fighting John, uh, Tierney next. But he did so well against that guy. He moved so good. And yeah. um, it was, you know, when his fight was done, when that fight was done, I was like, hey, man, there's, I'm, that guy could be, a, that guy's a legitimate contender. Let's let's put him on, man. I need somebody to hit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> It'd be great. To fight to fight. It'd be great to see Conor fight for the belt. I've never had easy fights anyway. Um, and I, I personally think that that he's he's a true 65. He's, he's probably going to end up being a way harder fight. Um, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. Like I love a challenge, you know. And I have my yeah. I, I I myself I, I'm in a minute, but nobody can imitate my style. Like you can't train for me. You just got to go in there and hope for the best. So um, we'll see how he does. <laughs> and the BKFC is possibly coming to the UK twice a year and doing four promotions with another promotion in the UK. So yep. would you ever think of coming to the UK to fight? I would love to. I would love to, man. Because, you know, it's, it's bare knuckle tradition out there. So um, I would love to come out there. It would be awesome to just put on a show for, for, for the UK crowd because they've been around for a long time. They appreciate bare knuckle for, 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 the, for what it is, you know, um, for what it yeah. takes to be in the ring, for the kind of heart that it shows and, and, the, and, and the men that, that, that participate in it. And it'll be awesome to go out there and just you know, showcase my skills in the UK, you know, even though they have some of the great fighters out there, they've never really seen a fighter like me. So it'd be cool to kind of just come out there and, and show out a bandido style, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's great. I really appreciate your time, bro. Is there any shout outs or sponsors that you want to give a shout out to? Man, I got so many people that take, get my back, not only sponsors, but like friends and patrons and, and my manager and everything. But I'll, I'll just give a shout out to um, Go, Go Combat Agency. My, my, my boy, Scott, uh, who's a great friend, and we started this Go stuff together, and, and he helped yeah. me in my bare knuckle journey. I want to help. I want to also um, Rob from Stripes, who's a long-time sponsor. When I lived in the bar, when I lived near Navarre in Pensacola, he sponsored me. And now that I'm in Puerto Rico, all the way over here, he still sponsors me. He still rocks me. We still rep each other. So I always want to give a look about Rob from Stripes a huge shout-out. And also Scallywag. My, my top sponsor, they always got my back, make sure I'm always taken care of. Um, and all my friends, all my family, wife, you know, you know Dion, sense, and it all work out. Um, my team, my coaches, and you know, everybody can give me support. I really appreciate you guys, and I hope you enjoy my next fight. I have a done UK interview, so but, um, I appreciate it, man. Always, it's always good to be the best.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's awesome, man. And like I said, I, I would love, like, I love a new audience. Every time I go to fight to a new audience, it's awesome because I'm a fighter. Like, we really can't do anything without people watching us. So, like, we have to have people. <laughs> yeah, like, we yeah. got to give them what they want. So, I would love to go out there and just give them something different. Thank you very much, bro, once again. But uh, we'll have to stay in touch, mate, and definitely do something again on your next fight. Yeah, no problem, man. You know, I got you whenever. Bro. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit. Today, I, I've been so busy. This with I've been uh, when I got back, I've, I've already done like I did uh, 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 Zach Kalma's training camp, and I did. I'm, I'm right now. I'm doing Lorenzo's. I was in the middle of moving, and I got family over. I got my in laws over and stuff. So I've been had a lot of stuff going on. That's why like I forgot what day it was. Yeah, no worries, <laughs> man. And I've been training real hard, so I'm like beat up, tired, and busy. So it's it's nuts, you know. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're more than welcome to call me whenever you want, man. We'll, we'll, it's, uh, like I said, it's no big deal. We'll do a quick interview. I'll try to get a better. Usually, I get a good background, like somewhere real tropical and pretty. But I just didn't have time. <laughs> it's okay, um, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Spot I on. appreciate it, man. I hope you like the interview. I, <laughs> I loved it, mate. Really appreciate it. Great interview. No problem, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank Hi, you. Mate. Thank you very much, Elvin, mate. Thank you. See you later, brother.